Hello class. In this video, we'll go through the workflow of 3D compositing use After Effects and Maya. We'll do 3D camera tracking in After Effects and create a 3D model in Maya and then composite the fire, smoke in After Effects. To save the time, we'll now use a full batch render. Instead, we'll use Play Blast Render for demonstration. First, let's bring our background footage, create a conversation, and apply track camera. Once it's done, we're gonna create a camera, select the track points for the first watchtower, and create no objects. Let's tag all of the no objects in yellow color. Here, let's select other track points for our second watchtower, and create no objects. And Let's tag them in blue color. Select all low objects and at 0 second, hit PK to create a keyframe on the position channel. S key for scale. And then go to the end frame and add a keyframe on position and scale channel. Select the camera and create a keyframe on zoom and focus distance channel. Add the start frame and the end frame. Then here we can save our project. Then select all no objects and the camera. And go to File, Script, Run Script File. And know the script file I provided. Here we're going to save it as a Maya file and export. Once it's finished, you'll find a Maya file on desktop. Now in Maya, first hit F key to focus in the scene, and then select all of the track nodes, hit Command G to group them, then select the camera and track markers, and hit Command G again to group all together. Here let's rotate the whole group, and make sure all of the track markers are on the floor plan. Hit this button to display two panels. In the left panel, go to Perspective and check on Africa camera. So now this is from the After Effect camera's perspective. Then go to the render setting and render using Arno Render. Image format use the JPEG and preset set as the HD 1080. And go to the camera setting and turn on resolution gate. So this will show you what is in frame and what is out of frame. If you don't see the camera name displayed here, you can just go to heads up display and turn on camera names. Now, go to Project Window and create a new project, and select a location where you would like to create a project folder, and put a name for the project. This will create a project folder for us. Here, let's save our scene. It will be saved in the project folder. So we're gonna put the same name. Now let's copy the texture files for the watchtower and paste them in the source image folder and bring in the model into the scene. You can move it and scale it, and use the left window to reference its position and scale. Go to the hypersheet, and we'll create the material. and go to the Materials Color channel, and load a file. And we'll load the Diffuse map, which is color map. Select the Material again, and go to the Bound Mapping channel, and load a file. Here we'll use it as a tangent space normal, because we're gonna use a normal map. And here load the normal map. and select the model, right click on the material, and assign material to selection. And you can click on your window and hit 6 key, and it will display the texture on the model. Here we're going to create a plane, and we'll use this plane as a green screen, so you can adjust the scale, and just make sure it covers the whole background from the After Effects camera's view. And then here we're going to go back to Hypershade and create a new material, and for the color channel, we'll apply a green color. Same thing for the incandescence channel. Select the plan and assign the material. 
Now we can go to the left panel and go to show and turn off locators and grid. So this is going to hide the unnecessary elements from render. And let's go to the play blast setting. And here's the setting I recommend it. Click on browse to set a name and render. Now let's bring in the render video in After Effects. Scale it up to make the resolution gate match with the frame. Apply a key light effects and get rid of green screen. Here we're going to create a new starting layer and use a grid color. So we're going to make a shadow for the watchtower. And create a mask. Go to the mask setting, increase the mask feather. And then turn on 3D layer. And find a new object in the center of the watchtower. And we're going to bring it up so it's easier to show you. Here we're going to copy the position and paste the position onto the shadow. And go to the rotation and we can rotate it so it'll lay on the ground. And bring the shadow underneath the render layer. And set the blending mode as multiply. Here we go, we just made a shadow for the watchtower. Same thing for the second watchtower. We can just duplicate this shadow layer and rename it and copy the position from the second node object and paste it on the shadow layer and adjust the scale if needed. Here we're going to rename this whole conversation and create a new conversation with it and apply track hammer. This will create a new set of track points and we can pick up the track points on the watchtower and create a new objects. For the wall on the watchtower, we're going to create a track on it because later on we're going to paste the image on it. You can tag the track node and the solid as different colors. And then bring in the fire voltages. We're going to trim the beginning part and change the anchor point to the bottom of the fire and check on 3D layer. And here we can pick up a location where to place the fire. Copy its position and paste it on the fire and rotate it. And then go to blending mode and apply screen. If the orientation is different, we can just flip it horizontally or vertically. With the same procedure, we're going to composite the second fire. Same procedure for the third fire. And same procedure for the fourth fire. And here we can just duplicate the fourth fire and we're going to make it as the fifth fire on the other side of the ladder. If the position doesn't match, we can just move the anchor point up a little bit and then copy the position and paste it on it again so the fire will match the shape of the ladder. For the center part of the ladder, we can use a mask to crop the fire. And go to the mask feather and increase the mask feather. So 
So here's a finishing look. At the end frame, the file shows weird because the file image are flat, so the orientation has been changed. To fix it, we can create a keyframe on orientation channel at the start frame and the end frame, and then create a position keyframe at the start frame and end frame. At the end frame, we can adjust its position and orientation to match the current camera angle. If the time of the clip doesn't match with the composition, you can use the time stretch to extend the time. Now we'll bring in the images and we'll paste them on the wall. First, copy the position from the solid and paste on the image. Then copy the orientation channel and paste it on the image. Then we can change the blending mode to multiply and hide the tracking layer. Same procedure for the second image. And same procedure for the third image. Now let's bring the smoke footages. Here we can trim the beginning part and then use the time stretch to extend the time so it will match the current conversation. And here we'll bring the anchor point to the bottom of the smoke. Apply a tint effect and we're going to switch the black color and the white color. This will make it as a dark color smoke. So when we switch it to blending mode as multiply, the smoke will remain. Check on 3D layer and copy the position from a low object. And you can adjust the rotation and position at the end frame to make it match with the current camera angle. Same procedure for the second smoke. We're going to trim the beginning, move the anchor point to the root of the smoke, and copy the tint effect, and change the blending mode to multiply, and copy the position from a track low and paste to it. At the end frame, Remember to adjust the rotation. And if the smoke is underneath the fire, you can simply rotate it along X axis to bring the smoke to the front. Same procedure for the second watchtower. Once you're finished, you can use a media encoder to render your scene. Remember to set your video code as H264 and render.